You ever notice that some fictional characters just have way more money than the amount that makes sense? Like, whether they're living absurd lifestyles or making outrageous purchases. Ooh, this place has got old man stink. Don't listen to him, sir. You've got an enchanting musk. It really makes you wonder where all those funds are coming from and how they're able to afford such absurd things. If you happen to be a person, then you probably know how tough it is to manage finances and be able to afford, uh, things. This is not all a you can't buy anything. Yet, when it comes to these characters, there's apparently no bottom to the wallet. Meanwhile, mine is filled with ramen noodle flavor packets and a Polaroid of that one time I met Dennis Rodman, but it turned out to not even be him. Let's start things off in the cartoon world. Perhaps the most notable example that comes to mind is the Griffin family from Family Guy. The family lives on 31 Spooner Street in Quahog, Rhode Island. While that's absolutely a fictional town, the county in which the city resides, Newport County, is very real. A simple Google search tells us that the average home in that area costs approximately $422,000. Not to get too bogged down in the numbers, but a standard 30-year mortgage at an average interest rate would make their mortgage payments somewhere around $2,000 a month. And we haven't even started talking about the sky-high New England taxes or insurance rates, or the cost of feeding, clothing, and housing three children and a dog. It's also evident in the show that Meg and Chris are both full-time students, Lois is a stay-at-home mom, Stewie is a baby, and Brian is a dog, so Peter is really the only breadwinner of the family. The happy-go-lucky toy factory and the Pawtucket Patriot Brewery must be doling out some pretty decent salaries. Either that, or the Griffin family really just milks the fact that Lois comes for money, and they all sort of live off of her parents. That wouldn't be totally shocking and would explain their lifestyle quite a bit. Speaking of cartoon families with relatively nice homes in quiet parts of America that don't really add up or make sense, let's talk about the Cartman family from South Park. It's long been understood that South Park is based in large part on the real town of Fairplay, Colorado, where the average home costs around $350,000. The Cartman home, however, appears to be in a nice area of South Park. Plus, Eric Cartman is spoiled rotten by his single mother, getting anything he wants at the drop of a dime. What's interesting about their conditions, though, is that it's a single-parent home, and Mrs. Cartman's line of work is, uh... How do I put this in a way that won't offend anyone? Um, you see, men pay her for, uh... Well, for her services. Dude, it's a lady getting food on! Whoa! Is it Cartman's mom? Oh, very funny. Hey, it is Cartman's mom. In order to afford a house like that and spending habits to give her son anything his heart desires, she must either be working quite a bit or charge a decent penny for her, um, for her product. What the heck is a Oh, why that's when you put your and have someone We covered Family Guy and we covered South Park, so let's round out this trifecta with The Simpsons. The richest character in the series is undeniably Mr. Burns, the owner of the town's nuclear power plant. It's never exactly specified where Springfield is located. Springfield, eh? What state? I can't imagine we're allowed to say. But it's meant to represent the average American town. According to the internet, Charles Montgomery Burns is worth an estimated $16.8 billion. That's quite the disparity between him and the average citizen. I mean, why would a multi-billionaire choose to live in a small town like that, surrounded by working-class people? Where did he even get that kind of money? Is nuclear power really that valuable? Also, can we just talk about the fact that Homer Simpson is worth so much more than we realize? I mean, he owns the Denver Broncos. Aw, oh, the Denver Broncos! Remember his wealthy brother Herb just gifts him the entire football franchise? Herb? <coughs> but then the episode ends and it's just never brought up again. Did Homer forget that he owns a Super Bowl winning NFL team? Seems like the kind of thing that you should keep in mind, no? At the very least, sell the team and never have to work another day the rest of your life. Instead, 
Homer's pulling double shifts at the power plant and the quickie mart for some inexplicable reason. Just call up John Elway, man. You're good. Another cartoon with unfathomable wealth is Scrooge McDuck. Being rich is sort of like his entire gimmick. He's the epitome of wealth, even if he is technically a duck. He's the only guy I can think of with the ability to go swimming in his vault full of gold coins. I mean, he's the only guy I can think of because not only is he the only character with a vault full of gold coins, but he's the only one with the actual capability of swimming in something like that. But you swim in money all the time! Yes, but I worked hard to perfect that skill. It's logistically impossible. People have estimated that Scrooge's net worth is somewhere around $31 billion. I'm not sure what's more mind-blowing, that amount of money, or the fact that someone figured out a way to calculate a cartoon duck's net worth. Moving from cartoons to sitcoms, there are some real-life characters whose financial situations just don't make any sense. In specific, what's with all the deadbeats who are able to afford apartments in New York City? There's Cosmo Kramer from the show Seinfeld, who barely ever had a job throughout the entirety of the series. An apartment in the Upper West Side goes for an average of over $4,000 a month. That means that Kramer is paying out about 50 k a year in rent, despite having no income. They do mention at some points that he received a large inheritance early in life, but that must have been some inheritance. Then there's pretty much everyone in the show Friends. With the exception of Ross, all the other characters tend to jump from job to job and are often unemployed for long stretches of time. I can't pay for this right now because uh, I'm not working, so I've had to cut down on some luxuries like uh, paying for stuff. Joey is usually an out-of-work actor, and Phoebe is a freelance massage therapist. Monica was a waitress in a diner for a large chunk of time, yet could still afford a 2,000 square foot apartment with enough leftover budget to buy and cook breakfast for all of her friends every morning. Plus, their tab at the Central Perk coffee shop must have been astronomical. The entire series was just an unrealistic portrayal of how much someone in that position would actually be struggling to get by. Alright, that's enough TV talk. Let's look at some movie characters with some questionable finances. Let's start with everybody's favorite wizard boy, Harry Potter. Growing up, the young potster had to literally sleep in a dark closet and put up with his miserable Uncle Vernon and his terrible cousin Dudley. It was not an ideal situation to say the least. However, when Hogwarts came a-knockin', Harry struck gold. Like, for real. But Hagrid, how am I to pay for all this? I haven't any money. Experts estimate that Harry's secured vault at Gringotts Wizarding Bank contains about $1.2 million, meaning that the boy who lived was a millionaire by age 11. Take that, Lil Tay. Do we still talk about her? You don't need to ask dumbass questions. Can I ask you a question? Oh, uh, sure, go ahead. Why your mama make you so ugly? Speaking of rich kids, what's the deal with the McAllister family home from Home Alone? What the heck did Kevin's dad do for a living that he could afford that massive house in suburban Chicago? When's the last time you watched that movie? That house is insane and they never once explain it. Not to mention the fact that the whole family was going on vacation together. That ain't cheap either. It's never properly explained, but whatever Mr. and or Mrs. McAllister did for a living sure was lucrative. Now if only they could have raised their child to not be a crazed sociopath. When it comes to fictional savvy businessmen or titans of industry, the first name that comes to mind probably isn't Forrest Gump. Those must be comfortable shoes. However, there's a long laundry list of things that this guy is probably caking in on now. Not only did he make a fortune in the shrimp industry, but he and Lieutenant Dan bought stock in Apple. That's in 1994. By all accounts, that must have been a good investment. It's safe to say that Gump's steak would be worth millions by now. We got more money than David Crockett. <laughs> also, don't forget he invented the smiley face. So, I bet there's some licensing dollars to be made there as well. I'm just not so sure how lucrative a career as a pro ping pong player is though. Finally, let's talk about Batman. Because this is Screen Rant and that's what we tend to do pretty often. 
Much like Kramer from Seinfeld, Bruce Wayne inherited his money. Rather than turn into a lazy trust fund baby, he took it upon himself to reinvest his riches in some high-tech toys that he uses to protect and serve the people of Gotham. It's estimated that Wayne's net worth is somewhere around $7 billion, which explains how he could afford that sweet man cave of his. Conversely, Tony Stark's net worth is an estimated $12.4 billion, making him the wealthiest of the rich dudes who happen to just be crazy enough to believe that they're superheroes. But what do you think? Are there any more names that we missed? Let us know in the comments section down below. And before you go, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and make sure that you're subscribed to Screen Rant because you won't want to miss all the awesome content we have coming your way. Until next time, bye!